If you guys need any cards, packs, sleeves, anything of that nature, shop on TCG Player using my affiliate link in the description. What's good, YouTube? Today we're going to be going over some matches from a tournament that I ran in my Discord server. For a little bit of background, I run like two alt formats um, out of my Discord, where one is like Edison format, but we unban a bunch of cards, and one is Edison format, but we ban like the entire meta. Uh, this is the latter, so in this event, the players had to try and compose decks that included cards that were not hit on my special ban list where it destroyed absolutely everything. Uh, Black Wings just obliterated, Frogs gone, uh, well, partially gone as you're gonna see. Uh, I think I killed Zombies, I killed Machina, I killed like so much stuff, I killed so many random staples, I banned Caius, I banned Raikou, I banned Bottomless Trap Hole. So the players are kind of scraping the bottom of the barrel of cards that I forgot to ban. Um, as you can see from this match here, we have Snack Mule versus Pana. Uh, one quick note, if you want to play in one of these events, all you gotta do is go join my Discord server. Um, link should be in the description. We host these every now and then. Not like every week, but pretty often, you know. Um, so, Snack here is playing X-Sabers, which ended up being a pretty popular choice. A lot of the X-Saber cards went unhit. I do believe Cat got banned. Um, but a lot of the remaining core of the X-Saber deck kind of skirted by my notice. And then Pana playing a very interesting list. I think this is actually, um, Zuxid's Ritual OTK that he made for one of his episodes of, um, Cursed Tech. It's a series he does on his channel where he <laughs> builds these crazy jank piles. So basically this one uses Advanced Ritual Art to try and make like a 8,000 attack Exodius to swing for game. Uh, anyway, Snack's gonna be going first. I'm gonna be opening up with Summon Full Helm Set 2 and... Pana draws a normal monster, which is, uh, I think this deck plays like at least 10 normal monsters or so, so not not that surprising. Not tremendously surprising. You do play like Moray of Greed to try and shuffle back a bunch of water normals, but it's just, uh, yeah, draws another normal monster, getting his hand absolutely decimated by this Airbellum. So game one, looking to be going to snack and hitting the Exodius too. I mean, that's just brutal. That's going to be it. It. So Pana going to scoop it up. Much better hand game too. Have ARA, have Exodius, have Demise, King of Armageddon. Um, so the combo is here. It's just a question of can we pull it off? Looks like the answer is no. Um, you need to drop Exodius first and then ARA, which is the awkward part. So you can't like Demise, blow up the board, and then summon Exodius, unfortunately. Uh, right now we're just set passing, activating ARA. So we're going to send some to summon Demise. Okay, so now after we Demise, we can prep. Um, so that means we can ARA again and get this Exodius up to 8k attack, right? And then when Exodius attacks, he will send one more... Um, he will send one more normal monster from the deck to the grave, which will pump him up to 9,000, actually. Meaning that uh, this Exodius attack is just going to be lethal. So Snack gets one-shotted by the Exodius, pumping itself up to 8,000 after we summoned Fortress Whale, which is hilarious. Game three, Pawn is gonna brick. Not too surprising, like I said. Uh, I think, I don't know, 10 to 12 normal monsters in this deck. I forget the exact number. It might be different in Pawn's build, but yeah, just gonna try to turtle behind oppressed people and hope we draw something. Moray of Grade is very good. Hopefully, it can fix the hand. We draw Heavy Storm. Heavy Storm is nice, but we don't have our combo yet. We need a way to get to ARA. We gotta draw like Manju or something. And now Snack's just going off with Ultimate Offering and. Got him's e call into like this big board that's gonna rip apart the hand. We hit the fortress whale, and now we're getting Urbellum like looped. So it's hard to see how Pana is gonna be able to play. We can activate heavy, but it just doesn't do anything. Can summon Exodius. Like if we had the ARA, it would be pretty good, right? We could send maybe. Oh wait, this thing's not big enough. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if there was any way. I don't know if there's any way, but it looks like Pana is just gonna go down in game number three, unfortunately. The combo is just not too consistent when you're playing all these vanillas, it turns out. So, yeah. Unfortunately, Ritual OTK not going to be taking this one. Next match, we've got Corinna versus Pwns Lord here. Um, so, I think this was a Frog Mirror, which uh, ended up being... Frogs were, were more popular than I thought they were going to be. Because uh, Treeborn is still really good even without Substitute, it turns out. Uh, and without Caius, apparently, as well. This deck is still playable. So, Pana gonna summon a Thestalos. Rips the Ryza, which is very good. Corinna's on some kind of, like, apprentice magician engine here. Um, 
I guess, like, taking some uh, some lessons from GOAT format there, uh, conceivably. But gonna drop the Trag. The Trag, very good here. Just gonna use the Snatch Steal effect and effectively gonna solo the whole game there. Looks like we got a main deck Vandy's Fiend here from Pwn's Lord, but the set uh, Old Vindictive Magician could potentially out one of these. However, there's another one. Uh, very scary. So we're going to set Old Vindictive, set D Prison. Old Vindictive going to take out that Vanity's Fiend, and D Prison's going to handle the other one. So Corinna's still in this game. Um, swinging in with Swap Frog, that's fine. She's got a Ryza potentially for whatever Pwn's Lord might do. And now we are summoning that Ryza, stacking back the Treeborn Frog, looking pretty tough for Pwn's Lord in game number one. Got that Phoenix Wing to disrupt the... Uh, Creature swap, but it's not enough. Zayborg gonna come down and end the game because we're apparently also playing Zayborg. <laughs> it's just like let's play all the bad monarchs since I banned the good monarch. I guess is the uh, is the thought. Makes sense. Makes sense. Both players just starting off with a summon swap frog in game number two, and Corinna actually going to set a D prison. We've seen she's on this in game number one. Uh, I guess it's one of the better traps left on band. I don't think I hit most of the traps. I just hit bottomless or something. I'm pretty sure that's what I did. I left most of the staples intact because they're kind of important for um, changing the way people play, uh, like warping the format in a positive direction. Festo is going to be someone ripping the Swap Frog, and we're going in. The old Vindictive, though, going to take out the Thestalos, setting another old Vindictive. Fossil Dino going to be someone, but that's going to eat a D-Prison. And now old Vindictive is going to take out the Swap Frog, but Pwn's Lord still up a lot of cards here. And the Crow. I, another thing I noticed, a lot of main deck Crows in this tournament. Um, I guess it's just like another good card I didn't really ban. I don't know. Uh, anyway, Corinna going to summon Junk Synchron, which I guess pairs pretty well with the Apprentice Engine. Just going to bring back Swap, but that gets Crowed. Now we're going to see a Cyber Dragon hit over. That's fine. Corinna going to go probably just goes for Android, hits over, gains 600. And this is going to require the Zayborg to be committed. But now Corinna can summon one of her monarchs, which she actually she can't because her Treeborn is banished by that DD Crow. I totally forgot that. And Corinna just scoops it up because there's nothing she can do here. Going to game number three, we got Corinna starting out with a Lore. And just going to pass, hope that they hit into Gores, but Pana just summons a freaking Fossil Dina. Corinna setting multiple cards here. Deep Prison's going to presumably just out this Fossil Dina, and Pana's going to pass. Now we're going to summon Warrior Lady. That's going to be met with the Torrential. Dark Dust Spirit just going to be poking in directly till Pana does something. Uh, one for one into Treeborn and to summon Thestalos. Okay. If he hits a monster, she could just drop Gores, or she could drop Gores now. It's probably better to just drop Gores now. Um, Pana not playing around it. Just going to set two, hopefully get a fat Torrential here. Could also go Solex Ryza. Or just swap, flip our own Torrential is probably better. Yeah, that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing, getting our Treeborn into rotation. And now we're going to use the Solex, summon Ryza, hit a random back row. But unfortunately, is the chainable T-Roar instead of the non-chainable Mirror Force that gets hit. Treeborn going to come down. We're going to summon a Ryza, but we should have just summoned Vanity's Fiend because the back row was actually pulling the rug. Now Pana going to <laughs> summon his Monarch. Wow, it's just like player goes and summons their Monarch. Opponent goes and summons their Monarch. So we're going to rip DD Crow, try to attack. We're going to take it. We have Solex Vanities, which is pretty good. Probably just going to solo the whole game here, actually. We don't seem to have an out. Uh, could set MST, but that doesn't out Vanity's Fiend. Where are your outs for Vanity's Fiends, Pana? We're just drawing DD Crows. We're now tribute summoning Sidra, just going in. And Pana needs something, but nope. Battle Fader for turn, that's not going to do it. So, game going to be going to Corinna. Uh, that was a pretty cursed mirror match, honestly. I should have hit Treeborn, I guess. I don't know. Should have just banned that instead of banning Substitute. We weren't hard enough on frogs, apparently. All right, next match. We got Mosca versus Ben. Uh, these two, I think someone was playing Dragons. No, it was X Savers again. Which I mentioned before, a lot of unhit cards and X-Sabers. And then Mosca's playing Flambell, which apparently I didn't hit anything from. That's interesting. That was a, a bit of an oversight, leaving that entire engine intact. So we're just going to Storm in Main 2, activate Wave Motion, set Book. That's an interesting Storm. Probably just going to get Stormed back. Should definitely chain our Book, because now we're just taking 600 for no reason. Um, I mean, yeah, it's very good for Mosca either way, but might as well not take that 600 or play around Brain Control. Um... Yeah, we're going to make Goyo. Goyo going to try and take this, but that's just going to get mirrored. Oof. 
The Lore of Darkness. So this is like looks like Vayu Flamvel, which is definitely interesting. And I think this is exact game, right? 28, 56, 75. Yeah, this should just be exact game for Mosca there. All right, game number one, going to Flambells. You know what? I think the X-Saber deck actually didn't do too well in this tournament, if I'm remembering. Um, they kind of got eliminated all by, like, the middle section, if I'm remembering correctly. And we're going to summon an Urbellum playing directly into a Torrential Tribute. Now, Mazka going for Greffer Bayou. Very interesting, though. We have a Chain Call to summon the Kaiku to prevent the Vayu from being used. We're going to try to Call Revive the Elfima. That just gets deprisoned. Now the Vayus are gone because we're inflicting battle damage with the Kaiku. Main 2. Oh, no, wait. Mosca just passes, and then we make Urbellum flip E-Call. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty scary. Pretty scary. Looking like X-Sabers. Gonna take this game number two, probably, unless this Mirror Force goes off hardcore, but we're just gonna make Heon Lay and clear the entire back row, so... That's going to be the end of that one. On to game number three. Let's see what we got. Man, it's just Lightning Vortex and DD Warrior Lady. Uh, people are just putting stuff in decks, I guess. So we do make a play here with Mind Control, but just hits into a Battle Trap. Uh, I think you gotta assume that people are playing Battle Traps a, a lot more often in this format, because... Like I said, there's a lot of empty slots and decks because we banned all the good cards. And we're just, like, setting everything um, behind this judgment. Apparently, oh yeah, another thing. A lot of people were playing Reckless Greed. So as you can see, Benno's draw phase being skipped here. There was a lot of people just, like, playing Reckless in decks. Um, again, a lot of these weird choices are just because, like, slots are there and they need to be filled. So we're just, like, putting Reckless in things. And this e-call is pretty sick. Grandma going to eat the deep prison, but we got a gardener or something to stop ourselves from getting hand ripped, or maybe we just let it through. No, we gardener. Okay, yeah, we do have the burial down there. We might as well use it. This is a big lightning vortex. Is it going to get judgmented? No. That's insane. That's insane. You just let them go plus one off a lightning vortex like that. Uh, so we make a armor master, but this. Area B is still an issue. Needs to be dealt with. Ragigira is going to get back an Arabellum. And now we have E-Call, which is all kinds of trouble. Going to clear that Armor Master. We could potentially have burialed back our stuff and used the Gardener to protect. But we actually don't do that. Now we're going to steal a Full Helm, activate Burial, put it all back. Going to summon a Silver Wind. I don't know why we took Phil Full Helm with the, with the Mind Control there. That didn't make much sense. We could have just taken, I don't know, I guess you have to take the Ragigura and then sync with the Flamvel Magician. I don't know, there's not really a good play there. So we're going to equip Armory Arm on to the Silverwind, and that is just lethal with the burn. Wow. So Benno going to actually kill there with the Armory Arm burn from X-Sabers. All right, X-Sabers gets another W, so um, going to be moving on. Let's see. Next up we have... Oh, this is the same guy from last duel. Benno versus Damon. Damon was playing Dragons. Um, which actually, I think, did pretty well. A lot of the Dragon cards unhit. Red Med, very specifically, being untouched on the ban list means that Dragons should still be very threatening, although I do believe Future Fusion is gone. So, Dragons and Frogs kind of got the same treatment. Or I just banned the ridiculous broken card. Uh, but this is looking really bad for Damon. We're going to crash three different Air, uh, Emmer's Blades. Or multiple Emmer's Blades and summon three Air Bellums. So now we're just ripping three cards. You might as well just scoop it up to conceal info. And that is what is being done. So Benno, I guess not sure whether the opponent is on turbo or what's going on. They probably aren't on turbo because I banned Super Rejuvenation. Um, which is another hit from Dragons. And starting out with a card trooper just gets hit over by the grand mole but this can just steal the grand mole that being said stealing grand mole isn't that great because if you ever have to use its effect it just goes back to your opponent's hand uh we're just hitting in though with the trag and the deospatian grand mole opponent needs to dig for something so they flip the reckless greed try to attack we are going to actually use the grand mole um you could have also just not used grand mole there and i don't know if they drew that mass dragon for turn i think they might have but it's like yeah you could have just stolen the Stolen the full helm knight. So now Grandma's gonna bounce back the trag, but this is just threatening lethal. So we got a book of moon 
the friggin red eyes wyvern now we're going to bring out the debris dragon go for a black rose clear the whole board and it works we're going to chain reckless greed so we got a bunch of cards in our hands probably just going to mirror this air Bellum attack area b that's just going to get typhoon we're going to summon drago and we're going to a game number three all right nice one solid game two there for dragons on to game number three Going to be activating Upstart. Man, everyone just needs to play, like, Upstart and Jar of Greed and Legacy of Yada to replace the missing slots of, like, good cards. Uh, let's see. Do we drop Gores or Track here? We drop Gores, and then we just hope they rip our Wyvern or our Tragodia. Of course they don't. They rip Heavy Storm, because why not? Uh, we could still Typhoon the back row, which is we are going to do, probably with priority in the draw phase. Makes sense. Actually, it doesn't really, because I, I think I banned Dust Shoot, so no one's getting Dust Shoot this whole tournament. <laughs> Oh, that was a genius move, though. No one wants to get dust shooted, right? Uh, anyway, we're summoning Kaiku. Gonna... Is there nothing in the grave? We're summoning Kaiku with nothing in the grave. Actually, that's a bit of a questionable side deck card, honestly, because when does Kaiku actually get over anything in the dragon deck? Uh, we go one for one. That's going to be met with DD Crow, and we have no way to get another X Saber on the field, which means this Arabellum is just dead, which means that this game is over because Benno only has 1,800 life left, and they just have an attack mode Ragagira. Could have at least summon this in defense mode and tried to set sangan and hope it might have worked yeah, there's like a reasonable chance well i guess they could have flipped reckless and then they're probably drawn into something but you know might as well try all right next match we got snack versus corinna battle of the crows they always seem to run into each other don't they um so which one shall emerge superior the frog player crystal seer that's so based <laughs> i guess it's a good apprentice target so we're just going for the storm force out the judgment summon that swap frog attack for 1000 it's not gonna deprison it makes sense deprison is largely dead versus the actual plays that frogs are going to be making later because if they just monarch your back row uh snack draws into arabellum probably just go into arabellum poke here no we activate reckless first then we activate ultimate offering but we don't have another x saber unfortunately we can mill with card trooper try to set up our graveyard but we don't have quite enough uh are we gonna synchro or are we not gonna synchro I feel like you should just make the thing is if you make um what's it called what's it called? what's it actually hyunlei if you make hyunlei it really telegraphs that the set card is gotham's e-call but if you don't make hyunlei the e-call is just like prone to being dead here which is looks like it's gonna happen unless we draw an x saber but we don't so we're just like having to wait two turns to play the game and the Cataster will get booked. Okay, so Snack's going to get to see another draw phase. End phase MST, kill the back row. But she doesn't draw an X-Saber. No, she just needs an X-Saber, man. All right, Corinna takes Junk Synchron. Let's see, we're going to flip, we're going to attack, we're going to get Mirror Forced. All right, X-Saber. Yes, she drew an X-Saber. She can play the game. Summon Fall Troll after E-Call. Synchro, bring something back. Make Era Quizos. What? Why didn't she revive something with the fall troll by the way all right well the fall troll is not getting popped so i guess we're not we're not getting punished oh no wait it will still get popped right <laughs> no we're still not getting punished maybe she did revive something i just didn't see she must have that must have been what happened i thought she should have had five on field though maybe it's because she synchroed first anyway creature swap just gonna win the game right there so it doesn't matter doesn't matter what snack did doesn't matter what she ended on creature swaps just lethal there all right we got some upsarts going for snack here Let's see, what do we probably just fall or full helm pass? MST being used, but Reckless Greed being chained. Nice trade there for Snack. Let's see, we can go for Mind Control here. And going to flip up the Old Vindictive in main one. Why not just wait? I guess if it's Mirror, then this thing actually can't kill itself. Okay, I can see that. So we're just going to Synchro immediately, try to Arabelle on the hip, but that's going to get Fadered. Now we've got the Ryza. And I think Snack's still stuck under her own Reckless Greed here, so it just has to set pass. We're going to hit him with that Ryza, but that lets us get a search. I mean, you just should not hit into set monsters versus X Sabers. T-Roar being used to stop the full helm hits. Now we flip up the old Vindictive. Summon the Junk Synchron. It gets rugged. We can negate this attack, though. Uh, summon Card Trooper. Synchro for Goyo. Take the Ryza. Well, in a pretty good spot here, um, but Apprentice is a good top deck for sure. We could yoink with Goyo again, hit in with Ryza. Apprentice gets another Apprentice. We have a set E-Call, but we need to find an X-Saber monster, I do believe. And it will also get stopped by Crow is something else that we should consider. But Snack's just beating in with her big monsters right now. 
and we can set a torrential here which we are going to do but snack couldn't play in this torrential even if she wanted to uh interestingly choosing not to take the treeborn we got an allure all right we can just go flip torrential on our own swap that's why torrential is the best trap in the game uh just setting mst man neither one of them drawing anything okay snack finds an x saber this should just be game over right space the back row summon ember's blade flip e-call bring out two fall trolls the dd crow is gone so it can't stop that this is just this is so over this is so over fall troll number one comes down yeah all right all right next game next game what do we got here uh we got a swap pitch swap opening so we can set the apprentice hmm i don't know that's like fine i guess we go rota but this this full helm can't actually get anything back so is it even worth attacking into set monsters with full helm when you can't get anything back in this in this matchup because it's like either it's dupe or it's well it's probably not dupe because sub is banned so it's either Treeborn, in which case that doesn't matter, or it's um, Apprentice, in which case you don't really want to attack it. I guess if it's a flip monster, you probably do want to attack it, just so they don't have the body. Anyway, we're going for Ryza. Hits the Reckless. The Reckless gets chained, though, and are we just going to take this? No, we got to Book of Moon this Ryza, right? And then hit over it. But the swap is going to get it back. That's scary. All right. Emmer's Blade. Call. But the crow messes up the call. Oh, no. Should have tried the call first, maybe. But now we just get Ryzen, which is not good. Not good whatsoever. We can flip another Reckless, though. Sort of resetting the counter. Uh, summon the Air Bellum. Hit into the swap. That gets deprisoned. Whatever. We rise at the other back row. Man, this is just not good. There's no graveyard setup whatsoever. And the Ryza just getting used again. So... Yeah, I think I think this one is looking pretty over. Um, can't draw for turn, so yeah. Snack is going to go down, and Karina is going to take the dub here. You know, it's funny. Knock is actually a pretty good side deck card versus this build of frogs because we got all the set monsters. All right. Um, I think the next match we have is the one from finals. So we're gonna see what made it the whole way. Oh, actually, yeah, it was a it was a Karina match again. So we got. Corinna with her Apprentice Monarch Frog deck versus Daemon's Dragon deck. Uh, let's see who's going to win. Apparently, uh, Daemon's on Ryza, which is wild. We're just going to go swaps and set the D-Prison, which gets Dust Tornadoed. And now we're going to bring out Drago and then attack, attack. But one Monarch does just answer this board, right? I mean, unfortunately, we don't have one Monarch. Or rather, we, we do have one Monarch, but it's a bad one that <laughs> doesn't actually do anything. So we're going to summon the next best monarch we have, which is Junk Synchron, and then for some reason we're making Junk Archer. I, I don't know, your guess is as good as mine. Uh, set Spirit Reaper should kind of wall this. I guess we can just banish it with Junk Archer, though, so it doesn't exactly wall anything. Does this... Does this get banished face up in this situation? Um, I think it might banish it face down. I don't know why I think that, but I think it might... Anyway, we hit in and we get Gors. Uh, Gors obviously insane here. But we still don't have a dragon monster to summon this red med. However, we do have a reaper to tribute to summon out the Ryza, which is going to be used on the Treeborn Frog to mess up the top deck. However, Corinna's got her own Gors. Um, be pretty smart to just like... Yeah, this attack order is fine. This attack order is fine. Um, because Corinna has to do a sort of suboptimal Gors. We're going to go for Mobius, pop the back row. Okay, Gors gets in and then mobius and then gores will presumably hit over this and the last two gores is trade for some reason okay we drop swap just to try and stay alive i guess uh i don't know why are we too low to summon trooper Nah, we could just summon trooper swing over the swap frog all right we're gonna set trooper instead though just wanting cons to conserve life points and now at long last we've drawn a dragon monster so we are going to go for the um the play here summon debris bring out red med bring out drago and that's going to finally be it so daemon was just like searching all game there to find a dragon monster to summon red med with here we're going to summon mast attack hit into d prison set set man you should just not attack i don't know what's so hard about just not attacking people need to learn <laughs> people need to learn everyone is on like triple d prison because i banned all the good cards there's no bottomless <laughs> uh all right so we could safely hit in because we got the drago here gonna reveal one of these dragons you are in a situation though where one monarch messes you up really bad and we're gonna actually yoink the drago and just let it die 
Let it die, let it die. Let... <laughs> oh man, the Drago actually stops the apprentice though. That's crazy. Wait, does it? Don't wait, wasn't Corinna on Crystal Seer? Why don't you just summon the Crystal Seer? Did she side it out? Yo, Corinna. Did you side out your Crystal Seer? Is that what you you didn't think about this interaction at all, did you? It didn't occur to you, even once, that maybe you would need to summon something off Apprentice when it gets killed by Drago, and you sided out your Crystal Seer. <sighs> Absolute rookie mistake by Corinna there. <laughs> Interestingly, we're not going to do the same play with Econ now. We're just going to set T-Roar, and that's going to work. All right. Uh, now we Econ. That's interesting. We take the Mast, we summon the Zaborg, we kill the Mast, we hit over, we hit in... Not going to use that compulsory, but that the fact that we're not using compulsory is kind of just making our gores dead. Here you should compulse the vanities and drop gores, and that's what they're doing. All right, good play, good play. You love to see it. Let's see, we draw into Lightning Vortex, and not a bad one potentially for later if that vanities fiend comes down and is being pesky again. And we have follow-up gas in the form of Exploder and the Debris Dragon, so we could just crash Exploder here, but kind of wide open for the vanities fiend you're gonna have to vortex this um yeah just pitch the riza i don't get why the riza is there it's it just doesn't seem good i don't know they maybe they just needed slots but it's like like i said legacy jar those exist so you could just do that we draw crow that's not very helpful and apparently the breeze is still just dead so we're gonna be going to a game number three all right all comes down to this who wins who loses uh, dragons or frogs in this uh, incredibly nerfed Edison meta. Upstart Goblin being used. We're going to find a Wyvern. We're just beating in and kind of puzzling why she left that swap there with only one battle trap. Interesting move, Corinna. Interesting. Very interesting. Ryza going to hit over. Uh, going to stack back the Wyvern hit in direct. Wyvern going to be summoned to activate Soul Taker. <laughs> oh man these are some wild side deck cards being brought in here by damon and we're just gonna beat in with that wyvern wyvern beatdown going pretty well but corinna summons breaker the magical warrior gets over the wyvern uh the snowman will wall this though gotta be aware of that now wait 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 i got forgot i gotta stop and flame corinna for setting her spell trap removal here <laughs> she told me she told me in the discord to not uh to not criticize this decision so at that point i decided that i absolutely must and yeah as you can see in this situation if you have a read on like a dust tornado all you have to do is never set this mirror force in your hand at the prog frog player just has no treeborn access she set the other one corinna what are you thinking she, they haven't played one back row yet oh my god oh my god no corinna stop <laughs> why did you set the other one you don't need to set more than one at a time. Oh my god. All right, all right, it's fine. We can use Econ, and we can do a some kind of synchro play, but actually we can't because Drago's on the board, so now we just got a tribute for Ryza, uh, which is fine. Answers us pretty well. However, we're just going to get big old red medded, bring back literally anything, I guess. I don't know. Hit over, hit in. So maybe we just brought back Drago. Actually, we don't have cards in hand for Drago, huh? Um, <laughs> wow. Yeah, actually, Corinna, why this setting the spell trap removal literally literally lost you the game. Why did you tell me not to play any for this? This was not a correct decision at all. Not a correct decision at all. Like, if you just set one and gotten screwed because of that, I could have understood. But after you set the one and had your treeborn turned off for like three turns in a row, you then decided to set another one, even while your opponent is not playing any back row face down into your back row removal. Like, why? Oh my god. Oh, it's not good. Oh, it's not good. So we're setting the D-Prison. We're just going to bring back Drago because we now have a dragon in the hand. The red man's going to eat the D-Prison, and we're hitting over the Swap Frog, and we draw Snowman, which is fine, I guess. Kills the Drago. Once again, just not setting our spell traps because our opponent has decided to misplay Corinna. <laughs> okay. Ryza will take care of this. But this is going to be one large Tragodia. Oh boy. That's a 3600 Spider demon -y boy. And he's coming in for that Ryza. 1200. Almost lethal just off the big Trag hit. Now we set it all. Okay, okay. We can finally use our Spell Trap removal. We can use all of our Spell Trap removal. But Reckless gets chained. We've got Typhoon and uh, just Summon Exploder is lethal here. So, Or Summon Exploder, Banish for Red Med, bring back Drago. 
Yeah, that's probably the way you do it. Play around Battle Fader. So Corinna loses game three. Entirely her fault for incorrect. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. We are now going to be going over the top four deck lists from this event. A lot of which I think were featured in the video. So I th we have two different X Saber lists that were like tied for uh, third. So I think this one is Ben's. I could be wrong though. Which one is Snacks? Is it this one? No, wait. This one is Ben's. And this one is Snacks. Okay. I got that right. So Snack also playing the Reckless Greed. I think there were three different. There's at least two decks with Reckless Greed in the top four. There might have been three. Um, she's on Grand Mole Ultimate Offering. Very cool idea to go with the kind of rat box stuff that we're still playing, even though we have no cat. We do have Triple Gotham's E-Call and Triple Fall Troll and, like, all the Sabres at three. So a lot of this strategy, as you can see, was still unhit. Uh, otherwise, we're playing um, Mirror, Solemn, Torrential. No, ter or no Torrential. Um, we're playing Call. No Torrential. Did I ban Torrential? I don't think I banned Torrential, right? Snack, why aren't you playing Torrential? You gotta answer for this. Did I ban it? I'm gonna sound silly if I banned it. I'm gonna have to look back, but... I mean, yeah, besides that, you can see a lot of stuff on hit from X Sabres. Also, it's a deck that can play Mind Control, which is very good, because Brain Control definitely did get banned. Um, otherwise, you know, pretty pretty standard. We got a pile of X Saber cards. With the Gravity Bind in the area B were in the side deck. Uh, honestly, you could probably main these in this... Uh, in this format, and I think the other X Saber list was. Let's go look at that actually. So he is maining the Area B and the Gravity Bind, also on a Rat Box package. Triple Wave Motion Cannon. Absolutely insane. I don't think we ever saw this get to do anything wildly enough, but yeah, <laughs> definitely bring in the spice there. Also on the Triple Reckless Greed, as I mentioned before. So that makes two lists on the triple reckless greed. Very interesting to see that technology. Also not on Torrential. Did I ban Torrential? Maybe I did. That doesn't sound like something I would do, though. I, I don't know. I'm going to have to look back. Uh, they're on the Tragodia, which... Snack, why aren't you on Tragodia? That card is, like, pretty good. <laughs> it's even better in a format where I've banned all the good cards. Uh, so, yeah. Um, anyway, this list a little monster heavier... Uh, it's on 3 rat, also on an injection, very, very much trying to play this, like, almost looks like some kind of goat format burn style thing with uh, the wave motion cannon, the gravity bind, the area B, the injection fairy lily. Uh, very cool. Also on Grand Mole um, and three of all the sabers. On the Sangan, which I don't think they should be playing without Rescue Cat or Monk. Uh, uh, well, Monk is, I think Monk is still allowed, but Cat is banned, so there's no point in playing it, of course. Uh, yeah, otherwise, those are the two X Saber lists, and then neither one of these quite made the finals. Uh, the finals were between Corinna on this, just this, you know. Um, interesting that she chose to play double Old Vindictive and one Crystal Seer. I don't know what the exact logic behind those ratios are, because I don't play freaking Apprentice Magician in anything, but this format is heavily nerfed. Corinna's smart enough to know she should play Trag in a, in a format where I've banned all the other good cards. <laughs> also on Triple Swap, Double Treeborn Swap, just to get to Treeborn, I guess. Uh, that's kind of fine. Triple Ryza taking the place of Caius. Triple Junk Synchron, just kind of good. Also a Cyber Dragon, that's a little weird. Triple D Prison, one Creature Swap with two Econ. Some interesting choices in here, but that's what you gotta do. You gotta do what you gotta do when all the good cards are banned. So that's Corinna's Frog List. Definitely the, the fact that this plays so high, explaining why people wanted to ban Treeborn. I think there was at least a couple other frog players. I, I don't remember exactly, but yeah, Karina finishing second. Very nice job. First place, we have the Dragon deck. This, of course, being the reason that Red Med got banned, and also on that triple Reckless Greed, also on triple Upstart. So people playing a lot of draw cards to like mitigate the fact that all the good stuff is banned. We just got to... We gotta dig, we gotta play more good cards. So we're on what, triple Mast, triple Red Med, triple Wyvern, only double Drago with the third one sided, a main deck DD Crow, playing some of the Debris Dragon, like Fitz technology, I guess, with the Exploder, the Spirit Reaper, a Snowman, can't play Hamster Ryko, of course, because I banned that. I've also seen a couple people playing Book of Moon. Um, I think this list and then like both the X Saber lists were playing it. Yes, both the X Saber lists were also playing Book of Moon, so I guess this card's kind of getting buffed by all the other good back row getting, or the at least the bottom was getting nerfed. Uh, double Compulsory, interesting. That's a very good card that I didn't think to hit at all. 
Um, yeah, I mean, one interesting thing is they're on double Ryza. I don't get what the double Ryza was for, I'm gonna be honest. It didn't seem that great to me. Especially, like, brain control is banned, too, so you don't even have your good conversion. Um, but yeah, that's the dragon list that got first place. Those are all of the deck lists. Now we're gonna get into discussing the changes to the ban list uh, as a result of the community vote in the Discord. And here are the changes that are gonna be made going forward to this format. Uh, Treeborn Frog, going to zero. This card, gone, dead, banned, destroyed. Yeah, I mean, frogs were just, like, still too much. Treeborn's such a good card, so I can definitely see that one. Other one I definitely see is Red Med going to zero. This is a big oversight. Dragon Decks, still pretty crazy without Few Few. Uh, I think Turbo is pretty unplayable, I guess, because of Rejuve already being banned. Rejuve, Few Few, I thought should be enough, but Red Med is just still ridiculous, so yeah. Uh, also, Vanity's Fiend. I don't really understand this one, but people wanted it, so yeah, okay, Vanity's Fiend banned. Uh, Area B and Gravity Bind both got banned. Um, I mean, I can understand hating on these cards. Uh, I think they were very good in the X Saber deck as well, which um, people also tried to get Arabellum banned, but that vote, I think, failed pretty dramatically um, for good reason. Like, there's no cat, right? I'm pretty sure cat is banned, yeah. It's like, why the hell are we ban banning Arabellum? Is that really the best X Saber hit? But we're hitting these two instead. Uh, and then finally, we have Gores going to zero um i can kind of see this one it's just a really powerful card that's played in every deck um and it'd be interesting to see what the format is like without gores of course we still have tragodia and battle fader which serve similar purposes but maybe just like aren't as sacky in certain situations i guess although tragodia's snatch deal could be like ridiculous um but yeah those are the six changes i think there were a couple other ones that didn't go through as i said arabellum uh, the Solemn ban vote was very close, I think. And then people also wanted Bottomless back. That one ended up as a tie, so it was decided by a coin flip. And Bottomless is going to end up staying banned. Um, not really sure how I feel about that one either way. It was just kind of random that I threw it in there. So I, I don't feel strongly about that. But yeah, those are the changes, and that's going to wrap up the video. So I hope you guys enjoyed. See you in the next one. As always, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Furthermore, if you enjoy my content, you should think about becoming a channel member. You get access to tons of bonus content, and it's a great way to help support the channel.